Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. This week's video, I'm going to make a hybrid resin and burl three-tier cake tray. And I'm uh, going to use a new resin, Red Creek Wood Designs Ultra Clear Casting uh, Epoxy. And also I'm going to use the Deep uh, Pour Casting Epoxy. So for the bottom and the middle trays, I'm going to use the Ultra Clear. And for the top tray and the pillars, I'm going to use the Deep Pour. And I'll show you that here in a bit. Both of the kits of resin that I have are six liter, and I'm going to use all of the uh, the, the clear cast here, the, the entire six liters, and I'm hoping that it is going to be enough to do the bottom and the middle tray. I'm going to mix these by hand so that I don't create too many bubbles, uh, because this is too big to go in a pressure pot. Um, pretty impressed with this actually, it mixes it up really nicely, um, and the bubbles come out of it very quickly, so it looks like I see them coming up to the top. So. I'm going to put some uh, red dye in this right now, and um, not a lot, and I, I want it to be pink. There is a lot in here, so I'm, I am going to put certainly more in than I normally would. But I don't want it to be deep red, so I'm just going to put a couple shots like that in. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, um, you'll know that lots of times I'll put color in and then mix them together, but with this one I really don't have any history with it. It's the first time I've ever used it, so I wanted to make sure that all the styrations were out of it and that it was mixed well. Before I put um, before I put any dye in, because you can't really tell how well it's mixed when there's dye in it. Okay, good. So that's not it is red, but it's not deep red. So I'm again shooting for pink. And that's nice. Okay, now I'm going to next use some. Caster's Choice Raspberry Pink. You see that or not? Hopefully you can. I'm gonna take quite a bit of this because I don't, I don't want it to be really transparent. So, and I really dislike mixing mica powder in by hand. I love just taking my drill and pushing it right down in, but not a lot of choice in this one. This container's almost out, so I'm going to put all of it in. So it certainly is pink and it's a little transparent, but not bad. Now I'm going to take a little bit of opaque white dye. So I'm just going to dip a screw into it. Pick up some dye on this screw. And again, like the other dye, like the red dye, a little bit of this goes a long way. All right, so what this is, it's a piece of birch burl. I'll put a link to a couple of videos. This is the last, the last piece that I had. So I had a slab of it, which I cut up into three pieces, one for each one. This, this is gonna be the bottom tray, it's 20 inches, hopefully finished diameter 20 inches. Uh, beside it is a 14 and a half, and then the top one where the cake is actually gonna go uh, will be nine inches. And I'll separate them with about a five inch pedestal. So I'm gonna pour this in. This is only 7 eighths of an inch to the top of the wood. Um, set this in here. And I am very hopeful that this will fill. And then I can get all three of these and I'm skeptical about it because it's a lot of resin on there. I've got this hot milk glued all the way around the outside and it's pretty secure, or at least it seems to be. I 
And this is aluminum flashing that's all around it. Made it easier to make a circle because it came out of a coil. Now, I need to move some of this resin because I do have some, some wormholes and things in the top of this and I just want to make sure that they all get covered. And like I thought, that took a lot of resin. It's a big, it's a big pour. I'm sure that all these little some wormholes and voids in the top of it. I'll just put a little bit more on the top, so I'm sure that I got everything covered. All right, so that's the first one, and I feel pretty good about that. Okay, here's the second pour. The second mold. This one's 14 and a half inches. Again, I'm trying to get some in some of these little wormholes and stuff that are in here. I really hope that this does this mold. did just now I'm going to go to the thick pour and it is a two to one by weight so I have to weigh these parts out um, if you can see on the label both of these components have a 40 to 60 minute um, work time so you've got lots of time here to mix these up so I'll put my container that I'm going to mix it in it's a four liter container so I know I'm good so I'm going to zero it out and now I will dump the full And again, it's two to one by weight. So I'm going to dump a full container of side A. Which is more than my scale will handle. So I have another higher capacity scale sitting on the counter at the other side of the shop. So I just took the, uh, the resin and Went over and waited over there without resetting the camera just to save some time here. Uh, I am stirring it by hand because the components are too, most of them are too big to fit in the pressure pot. And so I don't want to get any air bubbles in or get as few in as I can. And you can tell when the resin's mixed properly by how clear it is. You can see it's much more clear now than it was when I started. So this is half the amount of resin of the first pour. And uh, so I'm just going to use half the amount of each color and powder. And where we've seen this once, I'm going to zip through this quite quickly. It's pretty close, actually. Fill in these little holes. All right, these two are going to be my pillars. I'm going to want to fill them as full as I can get them because I need all the height I can get here. So I have to turn a dowel on each one of them, and I'm very hopeful I have enough to fill them to the top. All right, that was good management. Now I'm gonna set these in the pressure pot and I'm gonna to top them up once they're in there, rake to the very, very top. And uh, we'll take these out in a couple of days. All right, so this has been poured now for around, I think around three and a half hours or so. And so sometime between three and five hours, if you wanna put a swirl in this resin, you can do that.
Okay, so it's been a few days now I've let this secure. Um, all I did to demold it was just slide the chisel underneath of the underneath of the hot milk glue on one side, popped it up, it came right off the PVC pretty cleanly, and then I just cut the tuck tape that I used and uh, it peeled right off nice and clean. So that was nice, nice and easy to do. Really happy with how this resin turned out though, especially this one. I, I was really curious. Uh, this was a five and a half inch deep pour. It's, it is three inch deep or two inch deep uh, resin from Red Creek. Uh, it turned out really good. These ones went in the pressure pot and it, it on the outside at least it looks really good. So I'm anxious to see how this turns. So I'm going to get some hot milk glue on this the same as I always do. I'm going to start with the base. Um, because it's resin, of course, I'll be using a full face mask, a full face respirator, so be no uh, be no chatting during the during, so I'll have to voice over it after the fact. So I'm just going to mount this with some hot milk glue, same as always. I'm going to put a bead in around here, a bead around the outside, put it on the lathe. I won't bore you with the uh, with the gluing process because you've seen it lots of times. Okay, so this is hot milk glue to a sacrificial block uh, that has about a five and a half or six inch diameter on the headstock side. I've got the tail stock up in place without the spur center because I don't have a lot of depth here and I don't want to put a, a divot hole in it um, and it's just there for, for safety sake. And the burl was actually a lot lighter than the resin so I never during this entire turn was ever able to get it up over 800 rpm uh, and resin likes to be turned quicker than that uh, but this resin actually cut really nicely I was pretty impressed with this Red Creek. Um, resin so uh, it cut nice uh, if I could have sped it up it would have been much much faster for me I am going to speed this up a little faster than I normally would um, I'm just using for the most part easy wood tools uh, negative rake uh, number one hollower uh, the pro series rougher and the pro series finisher and I also use a, uh, a skew on a side a little bit to clean up some cuts Biggest challenge in this is just really uh, setting your tool rest parallel to the face that you want for the piece and, um, and getting it as straight as you can without any ripples. So I got this sanded up and I think my camera timed out. So I'm going to, I've already applied uh, some Yorkshire grit regular to the outside and uh, you'll see the right way to apply that when I get to the micro fine, but I didn't get it recorded on this. So it's already got a coat wiped on, hand wiped on. Now I'm just going to uh, turn the lathe on to about 400 RPM and just let the grit work in. So you may have noticed that after the intro, there was a logo for Yorkshire Grit. Um, they reached out a couple of weeks ago and asked if I'd like to join the family, and I very happily accepted. So thanks so much to Yorkshire Grit for supporting the channel uh, with your product. And I will leave some links in the description uh, where you can buy it in Canada at Woodsley Summercraft, and also a couple links to where you can get it outside of Canada. So thanks again. 
And we're gonna give her a go with some microfine. A couple of coats. So you just hand rub a coat of this on the outside while the lace turned off. Just get a good even, reasonably even distribution all around the piece. Then you turn it on the same speed as you would if you were sanding between 350 and 400 RPM. And just uh, use a paper towel with the same amount of pressure as you would on sandpaper. And let the grit break down and as it breaks down the finish gets more smooth. So here I'm marking a circle that's the same diameter as the sacrificial block uh, that I have it mounted on the other side. I'm just going to part it off of the, by hand, part it off of the faceplate that it's glued to now, reverse it and re-glue it again using the circle as an alignment, and then I'll mount it back on the lathe and turn off the face. So now we're turned around and the tail stalks up again for support. The little bit that you see turned on the outside rim of this is all that I could reach uh, from the other when I had it on the other direction um, Because of the diameter of this I couldn't slide my banjo underneath and get my tool rest in behind it So that's all that I could do to true up the lip All right, so here's what's going on. <clears throat> I trued up this edge and it was running true. And then as I was removing material from this toward the center, coming back out here again, it would be off out around again or, or off moving. And so the more I've taken off, the more it's moved to the point where I'm not 100% sure it's even gonna sit flat on the bottom anymore. I did, I tested it before I glued it on this face plate. It was sitting nice. Uh, but it is warped significantly now, and I'm not sure if that's just because of the amount of resin, the diameter of it, I'm really not sure. But I know that if I keep turning it, this is going to keep moving, and I'm not going to have anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my 6-inch uh, air sander, and I'm going to sand this. I'm going to do that now and see how it works out, and uh, I'll bring you back when I've got it sanded. Okay, so this actually, I left it overnight and it actually came back into, into true for me. So I think maybe I just got it warm, um, but it, it's much better than it was, as you can see how it's running there now. So I'm gonna leave this, uh, I'm gonna sand this up, finish sanding this up off camera, and I'll bring you back when I'm into the abrasive paste. All right, I've sanded up to 400 grit now. I'm gonna hit it again with the abrasive paste, the regular and then the microfine. Okay, I've gotten this off of the faceplate now. I did take some glue off of the chisel as carefully as I could. I did put a mark in it, which I'm gonna to have to hand sand out and buff, uh, but it's not very deep, so it won't be a big deal. Um, hot melt glue on anything comes off really well if you use isopropyl alcohol. And um, so I've just been working away, just starting at this. So once you, once you get it started, it'll, 
It'll peel right up. What I was concerned about, while it was on the lathe, it was moving at a true. And I was scared that it wasn't gonna sit flat. This actually is sitting flat. So there is no, there is no rock in it, which is really surprising to me. So I will, in a, in a future video, make the next two tiers, uh, and I'll show you the footage of the columns that I made, which I've already made, that sit on this. And um, we'll make another video out of the other two pieces and the assembly of this one. So I'm going to get my buffing wheel on. I'm going to start with some uh, Tripoli and white diamond and um, buff this thing up. So this actually was too big a diameter to fit in between my headstock and tailstock with the buffing arbor in there. Uh, it wasn't quite enough space. So I turned the wheel around, turned the lathe in reverse. And so the, the, the wheel's actually spinning away from me. And I'll show you a little bit here just of the, uh, the Tripoli compound. Uh, so I buffed the top and bottom with Tripoli and with White Diamond. Well, if you're still with me, thanks so much for sticking around. Uh, thanks again to everyone who subscribes to the channel, and everyone who watches the videos. I really do appreciate it. If you watch this and like what you saw, uh, please consider subscribing. I put out a video every week. And um, please feel free to comment, leave a thumbs up or thumbs down. If you do leave a thumbs down, please let me know um, what you didn't like, and we can work to improve. I'll put a few stills up at the end, the same as always, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.